dear father, I'm on the hunt for Big. And my honor. We interrogated Jax, the gift shop employee. He has shadow Pokemon. We found an ally in Jeff, the security guard, and took his family out for a nice spaghetti dinner. No doubt there's something fishy going on in this aquarium, and we're gonna find out what. Right, Uncle? I, I mean, right, Seely? Oh, oh, and by the way, Dad, any way you can swing an all-expense-paid cruise for Jeff and his family, they've really been through a lot and come out stronger on the other side. Plus, we kind of already promised it to him. Right soon! Pearl. Hi. Where we last left off. Ooh, secret rage mode in detective style. Indeed. <laughs> you and Luca had met up with Jeff, the security guard, and after your nice spaghetti dinner, you all have now met up back at the aquarium. It's high noon. And you met up in front of the tentacool exhibit where he handed off a key card to you. And you and Luca are now currently making your way through the hallways, going toward Aquamarine's office while she is on her lunch break. Please imagine a first new groove where Kronk is taking... Ta-da. Yeah. Ta-da. 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 But we are not doing that. Just imagine it. Sure. But we will not be doing that. But that if, that is if it internal. was not such high stakes, internally, I am doing that. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. So as you all are making your way through the hallway here, you leave the tentacle exhibit and you are now making your way up toward the uh, second floor mm-hmm. where you will be able to get into uh, the office. Nice. So uh, going through there, you're actually walking through the rest of the aquarium because it, you know, eventually loops back through to the entrance and the back toward the entrance is where you would you know, be able to take the elevator to go upstairs where there's also like a little educational learning center with the exploration station and, you know, all those sorts of things along with the cafe. And then on the other side of the upstairs is the administrative area with offices and where things. Where they keep the criminals. Yes, <laughs> but you will have to pass by the cafe on your way up there. So, <laughs> tempted. Mini meatballs look good. The cafe where Aquamarine is on her lunch break. Oh, so you can still go get mini meatballs if you want. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> We're being sneaky. We're being chill. Cool. So y'all make your way through, and just once again, as you're going through the museum here, you see the other uh, familiar exhibits. But you go past the octillery tank with large, the <laughs> the mustached octillery. You also go by the Mantine and Mantike petting pool, past the Poplio pop 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 exhibit as that well. That pop pop was like, be careful. <laughs> it was the the most serious that that Poplio's ever looked at anyone. Just sees you walking by and just gives a look of pop pop. I'll break you out next. I swear it. <laughs> And then you go through the Sharpedo Tunnel, uh, which has been repaired uh, since last time. Good times. But you make your way through all of those things, and there are other exhibits. Out on your way in, there was more of the lakes and rivers things, and this area where Big is and all the rest of the stuff is is more of the the ocean uh, area, but you went through the lakes and rivers zone as well. But the Sharpedo Tunnel comes out near the gift shop as you pass by do you stop in the gift shop no. at all? Or gr- no. <laughs> I have no time for this. I love you, Crit. but no. At any point, if you want to stop and observe something or check something, just let me know. Well, all right. Now that you're, all right, you put the idea in my head. Is it the same guy working as last night? Uh, it is still Jax, yes. Great, that's all I need. Go ahead and roll to accept challenge plus agility. Nine. Nine, a mixed success. Cool. So I think that with that, Jax does not notice you going by the gift shop. It looks like he's currently dealing uh, with just a bunch of customers. As it is midday, uh, all of these parents and children running around in the gift shop. You hear one like, where's the big stuff? Great Uh, question, (laughs) child. Search for the truth. (laughs) Um, But with it being a mixed success, it takes a little bit longer for you to get through all of the exhibits and everything and past the gift shop because of the amount of people that are here with it being midday. But you've not been seen. 
But so you get through there, you go past the gift shop, and you're back in the main lobby area where you can then go upstairs. Do you do so? Yes. Great. You make your way upstairs, up the elevator. You see that there's a camera just there in the elevator, looking as they do. But you all come out on the second floor. We got hoods. We got. We have hoods on. <laughs> when we get in the elevator, we put our hoods up. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Luca was like already in the hood zone. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool. cool 100%. Cool. Uh, but so you come out of the elevator and there is, you see, a sort of lobby area up here. And directly ahead, there is the exploration station sort of area with, you know, smaller kids, uh, youngsters, a bunch of youngster Joey's in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> who are doing all sorts of, you know, educational activities. Uh, but if you go over to the right, you will be able to go through the cafe and then beyond that to the administrative area. We go, we go, we go. All right. I did um, not realize we should have picked a different meeting spot with our good pal. <laughs> well, the the good thing about it is it was, you know, inconspicuous enough that you could kind of get lost in the crowd. Yeah, yeah. Pros but. Pros and cons. <laughs> we are speed walking. You are speed walking it is 12.20, and she is off lunch at 1. Okay. So you all make your way past the educational activities. There's so many crayons and other activities, but you do not participate. Yeah, my hand reaches out. I slap it. <laughs> Get out of there. And you all go through the cafe. As you are going through the cafe, is there any particular way that you would like to proceed through that area? I'll plug my nose so I can't smell the good smells. <laughs> No, I mean, we're just being as casual as in, in, and as incognito as possible. All right, go ahead and uh, just roll. <laughs> roll. <gasps> Hold on. Mm. I would like to get a, like, dish cart. Sure. And go inside of it and get rolled into the office via the dish cart. <laughs> rolled into the, like, back area via the dish cart yeah, so that you are TV not seen. Yeah, like, episode one Do when we did that. Style. Yeah. <laughs> All right, go ahead and... Um, That's incognito. Nice. You you and Luca are both going to try to sneakily get into the dish carts and roll past so as to not be seen. At uh, all. At all, especially by Aquamarine, mm-hmm. who is in the cafe. Go ahead and roll to accept challenge plus agility, specifically, since you would need to hop and roll. Anybody else sweating? Oh, no. It's an eight. Okay, an eight. A mixed success. Uh, With an eight, here's what I'm going to say. You get in the dish cart, but you do not have any Pokemon out or anything. Everybody's in their Pokeballs, obviously. But there's only room for you in there, so Luca's going to have to try to sneak through separately. Okay, that's fine. But you go ahead and get rolled, and once you are out of the cafe area, uh, the employee does not even seem to really okay. notice. It's like, Great. you know, it's just somebody who's cleaning up bussing tables and things like that, and they've got some earbuds in, and they don't even notice the Great. rattling of the dishes as you hop underneath. Roger, uh, Roger. Come in. Come in. Yeah, no. Hey, hey do you want to... What, did you want to talk to me, or did you want to oh, uh, talk hi. to me? Oh, Jeff. Oh, hi, Jeff. Doc, doc, not, not uh, what's my character? That's my. That's what I sound like. There, I found it. Don't not worry. Not okay. Not All right, well. Luca, come in. Come in, Luca. Yeah. Yeah, Pearl, what's up? Are you through? I'm through. Well, I'm working on it, but I also got to put the walkie-talkie away so I can get out of this corner without looking suspicious. Okay. <laughs> Cool. Go ahead, and how would you like for Luca to attempt to get through the cafe area unnoticed? You said he's in a corner? I would yeah, like- he's, he's kind of like in a corner just around the uh, door frame. I think that you guys were just outside of the cafe when you kind of saw your opening to get in the dish cart, uh, and so you just hop straight in. But sure. he is still technically just outside the door of the cafe. Okay. Is there, like, a worker or, like, chef entrance? In this, like, little in-between section? Oh, for him to, like, try to cut through the kitchen? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's, like, an employees-only door. Great. He's going to use the employee-only door and try to get a chef jacket, too. Like a... Mm. Like, hanging on the hallway. Just put on one of those jackets and cut through the kitchen. All right. Go ahead and uh, roll for him to accept challenge with agility, then. Zella just sneaking all over the place. Oh, yeah. We got some sneak in us. Oh, thank goodness you have a bigger boost, man. Seven? Seven, just barely a mixed success. Ooh, we're skirting on ice. Seely, why'd you make it so slippery? <gasps> oh, no. 
Yeah, it is beautiful. Okay, a mixed success. He oh, cuts I know into what I the. Would do, but I'm curious what you would do. He cuts into the employees only area, gets a little chef jacket, but the head chef kitchen person like accosts him and is like, "What are you doing? Get back to work!" And so Luca is going to be indisposed for a little bit to maintain his cover. That's exactly <laughs> what I would have done. I imagine him. Um, getting reprimanded and be like, hey, the dishes aren't done yet. And so he has to finish like yeah, he's a finish rack the dishes. of dishes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, so he, he will be indisposed until 1240. <gasps> oh, no. Luca, come in. Yeah, yeah, Pearl. Luca, it's already 1225. How are you not through the kitchen yet? Well, I got I got held up by the head chef. He said I got to do these dishes, and he keeps on looking over here. Oh, no. They also had spaghetti today, so that's a real tough scene yeah, to get a out. Real, it's a real mess right now. All right, I'm going to keep going, Tell okay? Tell you what, though, that spaghetti was not as good as the spaghetti from last night. Of course not. But, no, you, you go ahead, and I'll catch up. I just, you know, just trying to make the most of the time we got, but you go ahead and get in there. Okay, I'll let you know if I need backup. So Luca is now indisposed for the next uh, 20 minutes while the head chef, Carlo D'Angelo, Carlo D'Angelo <laughs> uh, is is keeping an eye on him and making sure that he's doing those dishes. So he, he's got to hold off until he can make a break for it. So as not to arouse suspicion okay. from Carlo D'Angelo. Oh, man. OK, so you're you're riding solo for a little bit, but. You made it through the hallway, and you are Imagine out a cool of little roll out of the cart. You do do a cool roll out of the cart. That was the success part. <laughs> yes, exactly. You made it. Cool roll. Uh, <laughs> so you are now here in the hallway, hood up, and you can make your way down to Aquamarine's office. I do so. All of the offices that are up here do have, you know, the nameplates on the doors and everything, so that's not really an issue. Great. An issue. But you make your way through, and at also, the end of the yes. While I walk down the hallway, uh huh. Can I just make a note of all the employees' names? Sure. Go ahead. Just roll to read the room. <laughs> now I get a great roll. Eleven. Eleven. You write down every single employee that is in the administrative area's names, and I'll come up with a list and give it to you later. Francisco. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Carlo D'Angelo has a has, has a name an tag. office. Wow, well done, Carlo. Head, head chef head pays chef. off. That's right, absolutely. Um, Those mini meatballs were really popular, Carlo. There you go. I'll roll to see how many offices Francisco. are up there. Francisco. There's somebody named Francisco. Absolutely. Okay, tell you what. In addition to Aquamarine, there's two offices. Uh, there's Carlo D'Angelo's, and then there's one other person whose name. Yeah, sure, Francisco. We'll go with that. Well, what's Francisco's last name? Francisco it's spe- Metropolis. It's, it's spelled <laughs> Francisco Metropolis. <laughs> Great. The other offices upstairs are Carlo D'Angelo and Francisco Metropolis. You don't know what Francisco does, but... But it's got to be something big. It's probably important. And you imagine that there's not a office up here for Jeff, the security guard, because his office is, is downstairs in the, in the first floor security office. Now I just want to know about Francisco. But, okay, you make it to the end of the hallway to Aquamarine's office. It is now 1230. Wow, hot diggity dog. Time flies. All right, I go in. After you have taken some time to wait for Luca and have now gotten word that he's he's going to be held up for a little bit. Hold on! Yes! I put gloves on! Sure. Then I go in! Great. <laughs> you put on some gloves, uh, which are what? Is it just like winter gloves? Yeah, absolutely! <laughs> <laughs> they right. have like little characters on them. Oh they got a little uh, muffwend on them. Which is for the listeners what? A little penguin. <laughs> which is for the listeners what? Uh, muffwend? A piplup? A piplup, yeah. <laughs> and they and they've got piplup, and it says on the other one glove has uh, piplup, and the other one says my friend. <laughs> <laughs> this is it's a TV show that I grew up watching as a child oh in gosh. Pearl's world. That's there was so a little funny. piplup, and it was just talking about friendship. <laughs> friendship, <laughs> friendship, my friend. This whole ordeal has developed because of uh, Sarah's late night nickname of Pokemon as she's watched me play Pokemon Legends Arceus. There is a Piplup who has been bestowed with the name My Friend. Because it's my friend. <laughs> now you have context, listeners. <laughs> so, as it is now 1230, you use the key card and are now in Aquamarine's office. 
So. What's the aesthetic like? The aesthetic, it's very aquarium. Cute. A very okay. aquarium aesthetic. Wow. Um, it's a shame that we're on opposite sides of this war. We would have been <laughs> friends. I like your style. <laughs> <laughs> yes. She's got like a little fish tank and her main desk and everything, but there is definitely a, a nautical aquarium aesthetic. So as you make it into her office, what would you like to do? She's got all the regular office things, desk and chairs, computer, there is fish tank. There's some file cabinets. I look at the fish. Tell me where he is. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple of fish in there. It's actually a pretty big fish tank because, you know, Pokemon are big, so it's not just like a tiny goldfish. Uh, there's like a Goldeen and a Finneon in there and, and a nice. Rimmeraid, just little things flitting around. But you look at the fish tank, you see them, you say hello. Hello. Like, <laughs> Tell me where he is. I give them one minute of my time to try to tell me something. Great, it is 12.31 and they <laughs> just, you know, a little a little bit of bubbles. Darn it, nothing! <laughs> she can't, I can't even get her pokies to crack! <laughs> okay, focus, Pearl. I slap. What would Luca do? Um, <laughs> <laughs> takes us back to our first meeting, our first encounter. What would he do? And then I look at a box and I see a crate and I say, no, not again. It's now 12.32. <laughs> As I stare down that crate and I remember my trusty crowbar given to me. Yes. I, say, I, have, I have overcome you. <laughs> I am stronger I now. I am stronger than yesterday. Breaking through an office and I'm here to play, but I need to focus and stop singing into the stapler. It is 12.33. <laughs> Stronger. Okay. <laughs> Darn it, Pearl. Ah, this is why you need a Brock. Okay. I would like to attempt to get into her computer and look through her files. Okay. There is a password for the computer. Not surprised. I don't know. Big shocker there. So how would you like to attempt to circumvent that? Um, what I would like to do is open a drawer and find her password mm -hmm. that she has a post-it note. Go ahead and roll to survey environment. Nine. A nine. As you start uh, looking through the desk, here's what I will say. She does not just have her password written down on a post-it note somewhere. But as yeah. you, <laughs> But as you are looking through her desk... And, you know, trying to look through things and, and, and find any sort of clue, particularly pertaining to getting into the computer, you do find something else nice. on the desk. Okay. Just as you're looking through it. If you want to look for anything else in the desk, you certainly can. But this is what you notice first and foremost is that on the desk itself, near the computer, there is a framed photograph, and it's in one of those little, like, shell frames. Oh, uh, that, again, in another world, we could have been something. <laughs> but in that photograph, it is a photograph of her with a short, stout fellow who has a chevron <gasps> mustache. <gasps> and they look like they're on vacation. I, where? Hmm? Where? Looks like a tropical vacation. Oh, interesting. Not an Arctic cruise. Okay. No, not, um, not an Arctic cruise. <laughs> I take a photo with my pokey phone. Okay, with your pokey gear? Photo, of this photo. Okay, you do. You take a photo of that. So that is what you've noticed just on top of the desk as you were looking for a password. But is there anything else that you want to try to look around or try to sort out or anything like that? You can certainly try to delve further into the desk, but it seems as though there's not a post-it note. Uh, and there's also the file cabinet and just a general survey of the room. After whatever this next thing is that you do, it will then be 1240 and Luca will be able to make his way to you. Okay, let's go through the file cabinet. Okay, the file cabinet. Go ahead and... Is, hold on. Yes. Is her office generally messy or is it very tidy? Uh, it is well kept. Okay. Yeah, then let's go through the file She's cabinet. an admin. Yeah. Well kept. Now I remember why I disliked you. <laughs> Sorry for all the admins out there listening. <laughs> all right, uh, let's go through the file cabinet. Okay. Going through the file cabinet. Uh, let's see. I think that this one is going to be more so... 
It's still like a survey environment, but I want you to use logic instead, since it's specifically sorting through files and things and trying to discern what information is pertinent. Oh, wow. 11 flat. An 11. Okay, cool. I think that you then, looking through the file cabinets, look through specifically ones that have more recent dates to them, since what you are looking for, I assume, is pertaining to Big Absolutely. and what has happened to Big. Absolutely. Uh, so that would mean, therefore, that you know anything date-wise that you're looking at is going to be something that's more recent. And you do find paperwork relating to the transfer <gasps> of Big to this, quote, research facility. Great. I get the address. Great. You get the address that is a Shiitake City address, but it is for uh, Nastec Labs. Oh, come on! Who... And I catch my voice. <laughs> and the fish are like nodding up and down. Is this it, guys? Is this it? <laughs> yeah, well, why didn't you do something? <laughs> That's a brother out there. <laughs> <laughs> but so it seems as though, I mean, for you, certainly red flag, red flag. <laughs> yeah. I take a photo of all the files pertaining to Big. Great. You do. Just because I don't trust my Pearl. Pearl knows she can't trust her brain. Sure. With this critical information. Yeah. Hence all the photos. Ah, that's funny. So, with your 11, you find that information, but just typing in that address into your into your pokey gear to try to check, like, you know, <laughs> the, the sort of uh, Google Maps equivalent. Yeah. You type it in. And that address is not of a real like, place. A research facility. Is it a real? Like, does it even come up on a map? It comes up on a map, but it is not like a research facility. Correct. It's an ice cream store <gasps> in Shiitake. Oh my god! Oh, that makes me so angry. If, it, if there's an <laughs> ice cream store as a front for nasty, I'm not okay. I've not been okay for a couple episodes. It's a silly scoop franchise. No! No! Have I been giving my hard-earned pokey to evil? <laughs> I've even, I've even tipped. Uh. Have I been tipping my enemy? <laughs> or is it all just a front? Who knows? No, I need to know. <laughs> I absolutely need to know. Not okay, not okay, not okay. Are there any other, like, is there a map? Is there any other location that could be... Like, is this paperwork all a front? Uh, Who signed off? Aquamarine signed off. Fudge, come on! Because she's the manager. We need multiple checkpoints! Accountability! I hate, I hate, I hate, I hate, I hate. Does it say the company who transferred? Like, does it say the shipping company or like, ugh, ugh, the carriers? It's the veterinarians? <laughs> so called. Uh, it looks as though, judging from the paperwork, that it was all internal. Any transport would have been via, like, Naztec, you know, their their personal transport, anything like that. Okay, this is what I want to find next. Sure. I want to go through the desk or the files uh -huh. and find where Aquamarine herself lives. I want her home address. Cool. While you are looking for that... Luca is on his way from the kitchen. He has managed to get away uh, as it is now 1240. Luca, is she still in the cafeteria? Come in. Is she still in the calf? Roll for Luca to survey environment. Oh, Luca. Not the time to fail, sir. What would I add? His instinct. Oh, wow. Luca has amazing instinct. That was amazing. It was a seven, but he has plus three. Oh, ten. perfect. A ten. He says... Yeah, no, she's still in there. I managed to sneak by. She didn't see me. And also, Carlo, I don't think. Also, nice guy. Yeah, he, he yeah. Like, you know, he runs. He runs well, a you know, tight kitchen, office, but you know, it's actually really nice. uh, yeah. Uh, and again, the spaghetti I thought was a little lackluster, but him as a person, you know, he seems Yeah, there's all right. a vase of flowers on her desk that says "From Carlos." Hope we can work things out. <laughs> Well, that's going to complicate things <laughs> with uh, with Waylon, who's in the photo with her on her desk. With who? But. Well, I'm sorry, with who? Waylon? The short, stout figure with the chevron mustache? Yeah. Who you would have recognized as one of the two guys who was driving the truck when you first went into Portobello Port Named was Waylon. with Wallace? 
Yeah, you got you guys know oh, about okay. Layla Wallace. I, and Layla. I guess I'm sorry. Maybe it's just the pearl in me. I assumed she was younger in the photo and he was older. But no, they're the same age. Yes. Oh, nice. Well, oh, sorry. I kept I flipped under the note and it said sorry in regards to the food poisoning. In, in regards happened. to our workplace misunderstanding, that was very <laughs> professional. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. I heard you had a really long bathroom trip. Not one Thursday. And you and I both know what the broccoli situation was looking like. Wow, this is a really long note. I should stay focused. Oh, my gosh. It's 12.42. Um, <laughs> but you, um, <laughs> oh, my heart. with Luca's full success, he says, yeah, no, she's still in there. It looks like she is, like, wrapping up, uh, wrapping up lunch, though. So I, I don't know how, how much longer we have, but I'll be there in just a second. Okay. All right. So you were looking through her desk now, and by the time you I'm find to get her whatever you're address. finding. Yeah. Okay. So go ahead. Roll to, roll to survey environment to see if you can find anything that would have, like, her address or anything on it. Come on. That's a six. Oh, that is good. That is going to be a failure. Oh, no. Where do you live? You are looking around through there. You do not find anything relating to her address. Obviously, she did not leave her wallet here or anything that would have her ID or anything like that. And failure is noted. All right. So it is now 1245 almost. And Luca is in here with you. Luca. Yeah. I need you to try to get into this computer. Uh, All right. I'll try. I'll give it a go. Great. So. Luke is going to crack the knuckles. Yeah, I and, love uh, that. I love that. Great trait. Uh, try to hack in there. So is there anything specific that you would like for him to attempt to do as he does this? Or, or how, how would you like him to uh, try to go about it? Can I see what my role is and then that determines how he does it? Sure. Okay. Go ahead and have him roll to accept challenge plus logic. It's a nine. Is there any way I can do a helping hand or something? A helping hand? Help a brother out! I'll tell you what. You've got Coco, who has, you know, used his little <gasps> electrical business to yeah. attempt to get into computers and stuff before. Yeah, let's get Coco out. Uh, so here's what I'll say. Go ahead and roll for Coconut to lend a hand. He has a little bandit mask on. Yes. Um, <laughs> it'll be Coconut using logic. or have, have him roll to lend a hand plus logic. So he knows what to give a little jolt of electricity to uh, and things to try to bypass certain things on the computer to, to oh get past no. the password. Oh, no. Coconut's logic is negative one, and I rolled a two. You rolled two? Did you Wait. only roll one die? Yeah, I only rolled one oh. die. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Phew. All right, all right. Six, seven, minus one, six. So that's a failure. Fudge, man. We're going to blow up our computer. Yeah. No! Our sticky fingerprints are all over this town. <laughs> so here's here's what I'm going to say. Well, at least that will keep her from doing her evil deeds for a while. <laughs> so Luca had what to begin with? A nine? Yeah. Okay, so minus one and eight is still a mixed success. So here's what I'm going to say. He will get into the computer with, air quote, the help of Coco. He manages to get through and just through, through a series of, like, guessing things, manages to crack the password uh, with a little jolt from Coco, who gets in there. Okay. Um, he has a, a quick moment to look in the computer. What is specifically he looking for in this computer while he has just the briefest moment? As you all hear on your uh, walkie-talkies from Jeff, hey, uh, just uh, so you all know, I don't know if you're still in the office or not, but it looks like she's ending lunch early, and uh, she's she's about to be heading on that way. She's getting up from her table. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, man. Oh, gosh. Okay. While he says that, I look to Coconut. Coconut. Where? Go and try to could I get into Carlos's office? Into uh, Carlo D'Angelo's office? Yeah, with my key card. With your key card? You can see. You can Coconut. see if it does. I don't think you have any way to know at go this and try. Go and try to get into Carlos's office. It will smell like food. <gasps> <gasps> yeah, I know. So I send Coconut to go do that. Okay, go ahead that. and uh, roll for Coco to accept challenge plus agility. 
Nine. He gets a little bit distracted by food on the way. That's just the smells coming from down the hallway, but he does smell that it seems like there's something in the office that he could snack on. Uh, and he does manage to, rather than using the key card, which does not work on it, he just gives it a little jolt and he goes inside. The cost of this mixed success will be that he does find a little snack in there. And so uh, he's Love not being it. the stealthiest about uh, leaving no trace, but uh, he does get into Carlo's office office. What is Luca looking for? You all have uh, brief moments before you gotta get out of here. The exact location of Big. The exact location of Big. Okay. Luca, with the briefest moment that y'all have before her aquamarine makes her way back to the office, uh, is looking furiously through the computer, looking through files, and it doesn't seem like there's anything in files. He's like, all right, let me uh, email, email. He goes to her email and looks through and just types in just some some keyword searches, artillery, big, things like that. And he finds one email that is a correspondence between her and it does not say the name in the email address. We print that email out. You do not have time to print it. No! All right, we've, we... But... We, we, we forward that email... You're forwarding the email. ...to Detective Reynolds. All right, now that will that will definitely be something that she could she could you see. You can delete a forward an email once it's sent. You can delete that. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna forward it, and once it gives us sent, we delete it. Okay, done. That was that was our real real. <laughs> Give me there, coach. You uh, you 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 do so, but in that email. It mentions, there's a few different things, and again, I can tell you more specifically, but you're kind of looking okay, quickly Okay, we don't even read it. it. We don't even read it yet. But, we just forward it, mm-hmm. and then we turn the computer into the lock position. Like, we... Great, you put it back. Yeah, there and we, is, we get out of that email thread. You get out of that email thread. Luca leaves all of the windows and everything just the as they were. The way it was when he opened it, uh, yeah. But there is a little evidence of some static discharge, a little electrical malfunction from where Coconut zapped it a bit. Guys, I'm really debating. Is there any way, I'm really debating if I can, what I should do right now. Is there any way I can cover that up? You can try, but it'll make your escape from here more difficult because she is like on her way. Luca. Yeah. Go into Carlo's office with Coconut. Wait, no, but but Pearl, you gotta get out of here. Go! All right. So, Luca goes, (gasps) yes. I know what I kind of want to do. Oh, no. What you kind of want to do? Yeah, but I'm debating if it's okay. I'm trying to think. Hold on. friends, Jonah here to say thank you for listening to Postcards from Pearl. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our awesome partner, Dice Envy. This week, check out their new Abria's Mage Hand Dice Set. They are metal dice with a cool custom font that come in a wide variety of color options, and you can get 10% off your purchase of those or any other dice over at Dice Envy by going to DiceEnvy.com slash QuestCo or by using promo code QuestCo at checkout. That's Q-U-E-S-T-C-O for 10% off of your entire order. If you're a fan of what we do here on Quest Company Junior and you want to help us out, please go to our page on the Apple Podcast app or Spotify or wherever you listen to your podcasts and leave us a rating and review. It is a big ol' help to us and we read every review that comes in. And if you really love what we do here at Quest Company Junior and you want to take that next step in supporting us, please consider becoming a Patreon subscriber. For as little as $2 a month, you can help us with necessary expenses, help us continue to improve the quality of the show, and get access to exclusive content and Patreon. 
patron rewards. If you'd like to give us that support, you could do so at patreon.com slash questcompanypodcast. You can find the link to the Patreon on our website, questcompanyjunior.com. If you'd like to contact us, you could do so directly through our website or by finding us on Instagram and Twitter at Junior. You can also hang out with us in our Quest Company Discord to get all the latest updates on Monster Fight and Pocket Monster Fight. The link to that is on our website and Twitter. We know that word of mouth is the best way to get people listening to a new podcast, and that is especially true for independent shows like ours. So we would love to see you posting about the podcast and telling your friends about us. If we see you tweeting about us or posting fan art using hashtag Junior or hashtag postcards from Pearl, you might get a character named after you on the show. And if you or your kids have fan art of the podcast that you want to share, just make sure when you post it to tag us so that we can see it. Speaking of fan art, we've gotten some more wonderful art sent to us since our last episode. Thank you to Mackie for some awesome drawings of the Criminy City contests featuring Pearl's team facing off against members of the Colk family. And thanks to Mackie's dad, Jack, for sending them to us. If you haven't seen those, go check out our Instagram and Twitter where we will be sharing them or on the fan art page of the website or up in the Discord where a lot of the fan art gets posted first and you can see it before anyone else. Quest Company Jr. is a proud member of Podicon Go, a group of independent podcasts supporting high-quality content that's fun for the whole family. Podicon Go is your reliable corner of the internet for the kind of podcast that everyone can enjoy, with shows ranging from animal facts to stories to audio dramas to RPG actual plays and more. Check them out at podicongo.com. I'd also like to take a moment to thank the incredible artists whose music is featured in this episode. Thank you to Foolboy Media for the song Video Game Land. Thank you to Pokey Nerd Scott for the custom tracks. Something Nasty This Way Comes and Absolutely Nasty. Ooh, I love the music that Pokey Nerd Scott has made just for us. Thank you to Playtown for the song Sneaky Town. Thank you to Trebant33 for Tiptoe Dance. Thank you to Christopher Moe Ditlevson for Breaking the Safe and Diamond Heist. Thank you to White Bones for the songs Impulsive, Late Night TV, The Heist, Do Tell, and Dead Winter. Thank you to Ludwig Mulan for the song Shady Neighborhood, and thank you to TabletopAudio.com for providing the ambient sounds. That's all for me, so let's get back to the action. Thank you for joining us here at Quest Company Jr. if I can cover up the computer static. Okay, so you want to try to like clean it off and get it get it back in its working order. Fully working order. Okay. You can attempt to do so. It will be more difficult since you do not have coconut here, but okay. you can you can attempt I to do attempt. so and it will make your escape harder. Harder. I get it. But go ahead and first off roll for Luca to get to the office. Get to the office. Okay. Is he trying for fully unseen, or is he going to try to play it off like he works here? Fully unseen. All right, go ahead and roll to accept challenge plus agility for Luca. Eight. Cool. He makes it into Carlo's office, and again, Coco's kind of made a mess in here because he's been rooting around looking for snacks. Oh, my God, coconut. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. You told him there was food in there, and uh, Coconut has certainly found some snacks. Uh, He's got some uh, very tasty treats, uh, some exotic treats from different regions, Uh, but that is not as important right now. But Luca gets in there. He shuts the door before Aquamarine has rounded the corner into this administrative hallway. Oh, my gosh. Pearl, what are you doing? I'm trying to fix the computer. Okay. Uh, how? I just imagine, like, I see something that's a loose s- screw or something, and I try to fix it. Okay. Like, that could be that issue. Cool. Is anybody trying to help you? The fish in her a- tank? Any of your, like, Pokemon or anything, or are you just doing this just full solo? Do you have any thoughts? You do what you want to do. I will say, with what has happened to the computer, like, there's some almost charred looking bits around like a USB port kind of situation. So it's not as much of a take this off, put this on thing for it. Like it's difficult to hide the fact that there has been this bit of electrical tampering and malfunction just with what's going on. It's not like a broken thing that would be easy to hide or take off and put back on. Like it's it's these um, little zap marks on the computer itself. Pretty obvious, huh? Yeah. It's like a high roll to cover it up. 
Okay, I know what I want to do. All right. We're not going to try to fix this computer based on what you told me. Okay. Um, But what we're going to do is I'm going to pull a fettuccine out. And okay. fettuccine also has a horn like Goldine's horn. Uh-huh. And I'm going to say to fettuccine, slay him, fettuccine, in the fish tank. Okay. And in my imagination, the fish tank is behind the computer. Mm, like yes, like when you, the, when you walk in, you, you see, see her desk. Her desk, with and the behind the desk tank. on that back wall is the big is, fish yes. tank. Mm-hmm. Sure, I dig that. And I'll buy it. We're going to see where Goldine is okay. and slam, and hopefully the horn could make it look like Goldine's horn. Okay. Broke the case. Okay, go ahead and uh, just roll, roll to hit with slam. What you got? Two. Oh, a natural two. Okay. Can I use my lucky feet? You can. Does that change? I know that when it's a two twos, that I can't get out of it. Can I get out of it with the lucky feet? Well, here's here's my question for you. You spent quality time with Fettuccine yesterday. Yeah, yeah. So do you want to use your advantage rolling one more and subbing out one of those ones? Or do you want to just use your lucky feet to try to get out of it? I'll use the quality time. Okay, so you're going to roll one more D6? Uh-huh. Okay. Roll one D6 and you'll sub out one of the ones. Uh, Fettuccine's might to hit. I rolled a three and a one. Okay. Four plus might, three Seven. A seven. I could puke right now. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Perks of quality time and a good choice that you spent that with fettuccine yesterday. That that worked out nicely. Uh, so you avoid the uh, critical failure of the two ones. Uh, with the two ones, it would be like nothing that you add to it via your stats and everything could could adjust it. But using something like that quality time advantage or you're lucky, you can salvage it. But a seven, so a mixed success. So here's what I'll say. Uh, with your mixed success, Fettuccine does in fact just sort of like spring coil up and jams the horn directly into the glass of the tank, which <laughs> cracks and <laughs> breaks and the water and the fish spew out all over the desk, soaking the computer, soaking everything on the desk, and making a loud noise from the breaking of the glass. You get wet and also take a point of damage from glass and water. I'm wet. Okay. Oh, no. And you hear the sound of a couple of voices in the hallway as you have made a loud noise of shattering glass and now also water is like rushing through the room and it's about to like go out the door as it flows out of the tank and the fish are flopping around. What do you do? Okay, okay, I, um, okay, I have one more thing. Were there security cameras in this office? Yeah. <laughs> I take down a security camera. Okay. You- Actually, you know what? No, I don't need to worry about that. We have the head of security on our side. We can get him to erase this footage. Theoretically, yes. Okay, great. I'm not going to worry about that then. Jeff's like, oh, that was a bold choice. All right. (laughs) Okay. I'm going to run out of the office and into Carlo's office. Okay, here's my question. Do you want to try to exit this office through the door or through the window? Window. Okay. Go ahead and (laughs) roll to accept challenge plus agility with disadvantage. So I have to roll again and take the lower. You roll three dice and take the lower two. Oh my goodness. I am reeling so badly right now. Bye. Okay. And here is where I'm going to use the lucky card. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, I was saving. I decided to save it till I needed to get out. You know what? Fair. Okay. <laughs> because here's what happens. <laughs> you are... Probably entering panic mode as you've been like cut by some glass of the tank and you're wet. I feel Uh, bad about voices outside. I look at them and I go, This is all for your good. You'll get it one day. (laughs) All of that as they're flopping around in the office and you hear now the voice of Aquamarine in the hallway saying, What in the world is going on? Uh, Muffled through the door as she is walking toward, uh, now much faster toward the office. (laughs) You 
realize that you cannot exit through the hallway <laughs> because you will definitely be seen. Uh, so rather, you note the window looking outside. You're up on the second floor, but you say, well, this is this is all I got. <laughs> <laughs> this is the option. So you open the window. How do you, with your full success from your lucky here, how do you get out of this second story window without just totally beefing it? Are you climbing out? Is there like a gutter drain next to the window? Are you using a Pokemon to go either up to the roof or down below? What How is- long is Fettuccine? She is large, so she's pretty long. <laughs> she's like 13 feet long. Okay, great. So Fettuccine is going to stretch out completely. Okay. Wrapping herself around some aspect of the window. Sure. Maybe she wraps her tail around like the air conditioning unit or something in the window. I slide down her and then she drops and I'll catch her. Great. With my Pokeball. Yes, you do. uh, And you do not twist your ankle or anything on the way down. Full success. (laughs) Lucky feet like I had it. Uh, oh my gosh, that was stressful. Uh, Ooh, I drank a lot of coffee before this too. I am jittery right now. All right. Oh and my so gosh. you get down as you slide down the rope that is Fettuccine, uh, and then she drops down. You put her back in the Pokeball, and what are you? Do you are you standing down there? Or are you booking it? I'm booking it. All right. You just start sprinting away. And the window's closed. Is there any way? No. The no. window is open. No. No, 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 Here's my question. In what possible way would Fettuccine have closed the window? Okay, I throw Elmer up there and Elmer closes the window because now Elmer can fly. Elmer can fly and has hands. Okay, I'll give I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. Elmer, this is your biggest adult moment yet. Close the window, sweet baby girl. Close it. Just close the window, Elmer. Don't look at the bird. Close the window. Uh, go ahead and roll for Elmer to accept challenge plus agility since this is separate from your escape. This is this is you hiding the fact that anyone has come through the window here. All right, that was a good roll, guys. So I rolled a nine plus three. Okay, 12. great. She very quickly flies up to the second floor, Pretty. closes that window. Pokeball. Boop. Boop. Get Boop. out. We'll, sit, we'll, we'll, we'll thrive later. Run. <laughs> and you sprint away as Aquamarine bursts into her office, flings the door open and says, what in the world is going on? And she sees just all of her fish just flopping around. The computer, her desk is all wet. The water's coming out into the hallway. Jeff! How does Luca escape? Because Luca is still in Carlo's office with with coconut. coconut. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, first and foremost, Mm -hmm. Jeff, I radio. Hey, uh, looks like you got out, Jeff. Jeff, I need you to delete all of the video footage from the past hour. Oh, okay, dokey. Blame right. it on the blame it on some flooding with 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 the electrical system. I think we're gonna need to add a couple of days to that cruise, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, we will. We will. All expenses paid. But he does. Okay, great. Um, as long as you promise him a couple extra days added onto that cruise. Absolutely, I okay. do. Luca is hiding underneath Carlo's desk. Okay. Does he still have his chef jacket? Yeah, he hasn't taken it off. Great, that's good. And everyone's running to Aquamarine's office, right? Oh, yeah, which is in the same hallway as Carlo's office. Yeah. Is Aquamarine in her office? She is in the moment uh, trying to collect her fish, yelling for Jeff and also anyone else. Does Carlo have a window? Yeah, he's on, it's like a corner of the building where the offices are. So Aquamarines is on that one side and then Carlo's office is on the same side. So there is a window there. Can he hop on Coconut and float down? Oh, for Coconut to try to uh, float down there or at least help him lessen the, the, the jump. Yeah. Go ahead. And then, uh, and then Coconut floating can close the window? Roll for Coconut to lend a hand plus agility first and then roll for Luca to accept challenge with agility, taking into account whatever Coco rolls here. Nine for Coconut. Nine? Okay, so he'll give Luca a plus one. Oh, great job, Luca Salvatore. I've never been so proud of that roll in my life. 
Luca rolled a 10, and then he has plus two on agility, and then plus one from Coco. Great, so a 13, so. Ooh, um, thank God for floating, <laughs> flying pokies. So he holds on to Coco, who doesn't carry him down as much as he sort of just slows Luca's rate of falling as he jumps out of the window, but he's able to slow it enough to just... <laughs> He's like, I haven't had to work out this much in a while. Uh, he's also very full of all of Carlo's snacks. Mm-hmm. Um, all, all of his um, lava cookies and, and galettes and uh, malasadas that he had uh, tucked away. He had the good stuff in his office. All goods. of the cafeteria stuff, not so good. No, he saran has, wrap, you know? He has all those exotic snacks from other regions in there. Uh, or rather, he had because Coco ate them. Uh, but <laughs> Luca... Floats down, holding Coconut, who then zips back up to close the window. And Luca, with Coconut, books it. The window is shut, but Carlo's office does have snack wrappers and things and crumbs strewn about. Coco! Why? I'm going to have to just catch a... What's the rat Pokemon? <laughs> a rat attack? I'm going to have to just catch a rat attack now so that we can claim there was a loose rat attack in this aquarium. <laughs> But Luca sprints away, and as Aquamarine goes into a full full fish tank freakout, and Jeff goes up there to try to smooth things out, the two of you leave uh, and can meet back up wherever. Where, where are y'all meeting back up? We're going all... Oh gosh, I'm debating about this. If we should try to be casual and meet back up inside the aquarium, or if we should just go straight to the Pokemon Training Center. Up to you. You know what? We got the footage deleted. Let's go straight to the training center. To the Pokemon Center? Yeah, to the Pokemon Center. All right, y'all go and meet back up at the Pokemon Center. (gasps) No! No? We have to give the key card back. That is true. Jeff does not have his key card. And Jeff is being yelled for right now. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is true. Where is Jeff's office in relationship to where we are outside right now? Uh, let's see here. Jeff's office is near the front on the ground floor, and you all were up toward the backside of the second floor. I put the key card in Fettuccini's mouth, and I say, Slither, and put this in Jeff's office. Now, Slide it under the door. Poof. Do you want to give that job to Fettuccini or to somebody else? Because Fettuccini's very big, and people would uh, definitely see a big old dragon air. I always think Fettuccini is much door. smaller than she is. She is 13 feet long and a big, <laughs> thick noodle. But she's tiny and sweet. <laughs> Do I have anyone and, but tiny? Like, here's a boa constrictor rolling into the front of the aquarium. <laughs> okay. I mean, here's what I'm thinking. I think that if you want it to get done in any sort of time where Jeff can have it before he goes upstairs, I think it's got to be somebody in your party because Luca got out after you did. You're right. Uh, and Aquamarine has been yelling. So he's got to go up there with a quickness. How big is Elmer? Elmer's Lil. Okay, Elmer flies over. Elmer goes to zip inside really quick to get that key she card She slides back the key card him. underneath his door. Since Elmer is small, she's like two feet tall, she can zip in there potentially unnoticed to give the key card to Jeff before he has to run upstairs as Aquamarine is is going on her um, tank tirade. So go ahead and roll for Elmer to accept challenge plus agility to do it quickly and unseen. We're doing great with those rolls. Okay, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11, full success. She zips in there really quickly, uh, just um, amongst... Can she also spill Jeff's coffee all over his equipment? Ooh, just on, on her way out? Yeah. Sure. I mean, it's it's right there near the computer and everything, so she can she can do that. Knock it over with your little tiny little tiny feet while you're flying. Yeah, full success. She zips in there, gives that to him, and then Pink. just with, with her little with her little nub and hand, Pink. just yep. knocks that coffee over. He's like, oh oh oh, geez. So All you're right. real good, Jeff. I was in the middle of del- okay, but she gives the key card back to him as he's like, I got to deal with that later, uh, and he just goes to run upstairs, and she zips out but she is not noticed by anyone with her 11. She does it quickly and nimbly and also cutely. Oh, way to go. (gasps) We're back at the Pokemon Center. You are back at the Pokemon Center. Luca! Oh, that was stressful. I think I could puke. I think I got a wrinkle. Look at this new wrinkle. That was from so much stress. 
No, that was a lot. That was a lot. I really didn't know if we were going to... He's like got crumbs all over his mouth. You have gotten lazy, sir. You used to be a spy extraordinaire, and you left all those crumbs. You should have vacuumed with your mouth if you were going to go for the treats. I know I would have done the same thing, too. (laughs) All right, here's what I propose to the team. Yes. You guys... We kind of did okay, but we also kind of did really bad. Yeah, no, there were highs and lows for sure. But what I propose is we take Shavakadu and fly immediately to the address we found. Right. Well, is is that is that where he actually is, or what did what did the we we need to look at the email, right? Let's look at the email. Okay. So if you want to look at the email, you do not currently have it, Detective Reynolds. Technically. Bring uh, bring. Since, bring, bring. Since you forwarded it to him. Bring, bring. Bring, bring. Yeah, Pearl. Hi. Hey, what's what's going on? Uh, nothing much. Just did a little recon action. Uh, curious if you got a new email sent your way from uh, Luca Salvatore. No, I don't see anything from oh, Luca. Oh, sorry, sorry. Sorry about that. No, I don't have anything I'm from a- Luca. I have something... It looks like it's in my spam. It's oh, from Ginger it. Mermaid at Pokemail.com. Yeah. Open that up. Okay. Why do I have a what kind of Pokemail? That's like that's so old. We're on like Ultra Mail. Now. You know, it's a I think it's a a business thing. I think they got Pokemail a deal. is like the AOL Absolutely. of emails. Because there was Pokemail a- and then there was Great Mail and now you guys are on Ultra Mail. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I think it's a corporate thing. All right, uh, contract. Pearl, what have you gotten into? What is this? Why is it? This is an email that was looks like it was originally to WA, uh-huh. D- W-A, WA, uh-huh. I guess, at Nastech.com. Pearl, what are you into? Nastech, huh? Interesting. Just saving the world. Don't worry about it. Look, can you forward that to me? It's Pearl at, what is it again? <laughs> well, I, I assume that uh, Pearl would probably have an uh, ultra mail. Uh, it's Pearl at Ultramail. Oh, no, you could not get straight up Pearl. There's there's definitely the somebody one, else who's got It's Pearl, I'm the one and only at Ultramail. <laughs> the one and only Pearl at Ultramail? Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, but what? Where, where are you and what's going on? Um, I'm at Bullet. Um, I broke into an aquarium. You, um... Uh, because they stole a precious, precious life, wait. and I'm giving a free cruise to Jeff. Okay, hold on. Is this the same? This is the same aquarium where you had the whole Bob and Thwomp debacle? Yeah! Okay, Pearl, do you need an adult? No! Are you sure? I mean, what's your schedule look like? I mean, I'm I'm kind of tied up in something right now. I'm in uh, Amanita Town right now. Lewis and I are following up on some things, but I could send someone your way if you if you need an adult. Mm, do I know them? What? Well, yes, you know them. Are you sure? Yes. Are they cool? I well, that's up for debate, but they oh, will. Oh man, they, I kind of got a cool thing going on. Like Luke is really cool, <laughs> and so I'm really, really cool. cool. I'm Pearl, the one and only at Ultramail. So, <laughs> I mean, what's their email? I uh, Pearl, I'm just I'm gonna send you an adult. <laughs> just don't do anything rash Luke, until they oh, show up. We got off. a babysitter because we didn't do a good enough spy job. <laughs> I mean, after that whole whole thing. I did I, almost harm three fish Pokemon, so yeah, probably a yeah, good call. Okay. I'm getting wild over here, <laughs> and I'm out of breath. She's a loose cannon detective. But we made it out. I learned a lot. Okay, yeah, no, I'm gonna send you an Can adult. Can you send the email, though, too? Yes, I will send this. I'll forward you this email that you've forwarded to me. Great. All right. Keep that. Keep it. That's evidence. Print it. Okay. Print it. Print it out. Print it out. Yes, I will. I will print it. So this isn't a joking matter. What exactly out. is going on, though? They've stolen something? What? They have stolen a Pokemon that I decided to protect with my honor. And I am going to right this wrong. Okay, so it's a snagged Pokemon situation. Okay, well, when you put it like that, it sounds like it happens every day. It does, Pearl. It's not okay with Big, though. I put my name on that Pokey. I said I will protect it. The Octillery? Yeah. As I rolled for him to see if he had any idea who that was, he read the brief. Yeah, and he seen my backpack. 
And he's also seen your backpack. All right, yeah, no, just, if you can just hold on tight, I can have somebody there tomorrow morning. That's that's as fast as I got. If you can hold on until then. I might be arrested by then. If so, find me in prison. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how the Hoose Scout will treat me. Pearl, try not to get arrested. Can you just not blow anything up for a day? Okay, I'll try. Okay, all right, just be We're safe, at the okay? Center. Okay. Okay. All right. A full day? Can you fly him over? They are flying. Oh, wow. And they'll Slow. be there tomorrow morning. Oh, man, he's sending us the slowest one he's got, Luca. <laughs> <laughs> what else is new? <laughs> All, right, All right, I'll bye. try to be good, only yeah. because I only messed it up so bad, so quickly, so fast. Great, okay. I, really I got to let verge. you go because I'm kind of in an undercover thing that's oh, happening right well, now. Oh, well, tell me. I would love to listen in and learn from the best. I, pro I really, I got it. Keep gotta... me on speaker. <laughs> Click. Click. <laughs> Why is it that every time I try to love you, you push me away? He just doesn't know how to cope with these feelings, Pearl. He's not emotionally, you know, available. Wow, you have never looked so cool. <laughs> He's like against a wall, <laughs> like propped up on the wall type thing. Got toothpick in hand. Talking about being emotionally available. Yeah, what the heck was that, man? <laughs> you know, that's just teen stuff. All right, so you read the email. <laughs> Oh, from great. Ginger Mermaid at okay, Pokemail.com to Wah at Nastech.com. The email says, You'll be pleased to know that the package is en route from the Bolet Aquarium. I look forward to seeing the results of Nastech Lab study soon. Perhaps we can meet up and discuss them over ice cream the next time you're in the city. Sincerely, Aquamarine. Luca? Yeah? I'm about to blow up an ice cream parlor. And that is where we'll end this episode. <laughs> I never thought she would ever utter those words, but they serve too much sorbet if you get my drift. Are you looking for high quality, family friendly podcasts? Shows that are safe for younger or more sensitive listeners. Podicon Go is a reliable corner of the internet for the kind of podcast that everyone can enjoy. From educational programs to conversational topics and incredible storytelling and role playing shows in a variety of styles, themes, and age groups. Podicon Go is a group of independent podcast creators dedicated to creating high quality programs that provide family fun for everyone. Visit podicongo.com for an ever-growing lineup of shows, complete with descriptions and ways you can listen. Connect with the Podicon Go family-friendly podcast network on Facebook and Twitter. P-O-D-I-C-O-N Go. It's podcast fun for everyone. Podicon Go. Thank you for listening to Postcard from Poor on Quest Company Junior. Postcards from Pearl is a fan-made podcast and is not affiliated with Nintendo, Game Freak, or the Pokemon Company.